So good morning one and all. I'm Dr. Gopinath Reswan from Chennai. So I'm going to talk on data setup and patient positioning in shoulder arthroscopy. So for every surgery, we need a proper data. So for a shoulder arthroscopy per se, uh, 30 by 30 feet room is more than enough. But the most important factor over here is we are going to uh, operate on a screen. So the room should uh, have any, should not have any glary environment so that it doesn't reflect on the screen and uh, cause any hampering on the visual acuity of the surgeon. So make sure the uh, uh, room is quite uh, non glare So this is an example of a theta layout. So for instance, this in this picture, you can see a patient being pushed in the lateral decubitus position. So I, in, the, in this position, the patient has to be uh, maintained in the lateral decubitus position and the monitor should be facing the patient and the surgeon should stand behind the patient with the uh, assistant. And uh, I prefer to have two mayor stands over here because one mayor stand should uh, hold all the capital equipment like the shaver or camera system because it's quite costly and you should not uh, try to miss it down. And another uh, mayor stand behind with my uh, basic entry level instruments like the whizzing rods, the knife, and the uh, other equipment for the making the entry portals. And uh, my data stand should stand behind me so, uh, in qu quite close proximity so that I can get all the equipment uh, on hand. So the assistants can, uh, the anesthetist from uh, in this picture is shown here, but I prefer to keep him over here because he can f uh, face the patient throughout the procedure and it will be easy for him to monitor the patient's vitals. So this is just an example. So we'll be moving on to the practical approaches. And moreover, I just formulated this uh, presentation in a practical way, adhering to the scientific uh, evidences. And because most of the time, like we get to operate in all the setups. So we are more um, like being an arthroscopic surgeon, we might be a freelancing surgeons as well. So we, not, we, we might not be having the exact equipments uh, in all the OTs we are operating. So I just tried to formulate this presentation in a way that uh, from basic level OT to the high level OT what we have uh, in our <coughs> practice. So before going to the theater, a surgeon should be well aware of the equipments what he's going to use. So for instance, this is the station and uh, the camera system, the scope what he's going to use for the, uh, for the surgery and the, sh uh, the shaver systems. And most importantly, in especially in shoulder surgery, we require a pump because the most common complication or the uh, trouble we face in shoulder is the visualization because of bleeding. So a good arthroscopy pump is always required. And moreover, the pump should be calibrated well enough for every cases because uh, the pump might be showing some readings. There are enough studies to say that on the pump, you might be fixing a lesser pressure, but actual pressure inside the in intra uh, articular area will be quite high. So, the, so the, to prevent extra, extra restriction of fluid, the pump should be calibrated, calibrated properly. And we have, we do have good set of pumps, like especially this pump. We, we, are, we have joint specific uh, pressures have been already been calibrated in the pumps. So, next important device in a shoulder surgery is the traction devices. So, again, these are hi-fi systems, and moreover, they are quite. Uh, costly affair, and, but they make our life much more easier. But we do can operate on uh, cases without these as well, but I'll just be showing all the examples. So this one particular system is called uh, uh, sh uh, arm positioner, where it has a lot of uh, multi-axis systems. Uh, touch of a button, all these multi-axis systems will become jiggle around. It will be very easy to maneuver. So you can, once you leave the button, it just gets logged in the particular position where the patient arm has to be rested. So this particular system I use in, uh, uh, what's it, in a um, beach chair position. And this can also be utilized in a lateral position as well. So next important traction device is a three-point uh, shoulder distraction system. This one is devised by Arthrex. But again, we do have a lot of companies coming up with these uh, traction devices. Especially this is useful in case of a lateral decubitus position, whereby we require a lot of traction. Especially we put this patient in a lateral decubitus position in, in a bank card repair, where we work on a labrum. So we need a lot of space between the uh, humerus and the glenoid. And for this system, we need a traction device. So this will work fine, where you can uh, apply traction in this direction. And also, there's a vertical traction system available in this, uh, in this uh, traction frame, where if at all you require a, a, a vertical traction, displacing the uh, humerus head away from the glenoid, this system will work fine for us. So again, these are all the things which are available in the market, but uh, not necessarily we should have all the system in our hand. But again, there are other such alternatives where I try to use it in uh, suboptimal data systems. So coming first to the lateral decubitus position, I prefer to uh, put all my shoulders, most of my shoulders in the lat lateral decubitus position because uh, the point is, I'll just let you know the uh, patient positioning. Here you can see again, the, there's the same old picture which I mentioned in the first slide, where the patient is put in the traction frame in a lateral decubitus position. The first mayor table is for uh, holding all my camera and uh, shaver systems and RF uh, modules. And the, uh, another mayor table for my uh, basic instrumentation for entry portals like knife, 
a canvas and missing rod, and my data assistant stand behind me. And Anas is, uh, well, again, he should be well aware of the patient's uh, vital, so he should be uh, in close proximity. So this is about the data layout. But uh, why do I prefer uh, lateral decompression position? Because uh, we do not require any specialized OT table for this position. Almost all OT tables are compatible with this position, especially if, to, if at all they have uh, proper, uh, I mean, uh, what's it, attachments, uh, attachment uh, rods. And moreover, it gives adequate exposure and traction, especially when we work on the lateral side. So for this particular position, the only disadvantage is we cannot uh, operate a patient on sedation because the patient cannot be lying in the lateral position for quite a long time. So uh, GA is always preferred, along with an interscaling block for both perioperative and po early postoperative uh, analysis effect. And this interscaling box works fine because uh, intraoperatively the pain control will let us uh, give us a good uh, uh, field of vision because there won't be much of a bleeding. And moreover, and the, uh, 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 apart from that, the anesthetic team has to maintain a normothermia during the procedure with warmer blankets and warmed IV solutions. So coming to the patient motion, once the patient, imagine the patient, this particular patient is anesthetized with general anesthesia. The first position is to put the patient in lateral uh, position. So always make sure the neck position is very important. The undue stretching of neck can cause strain postoperatively. So always try to uh, give adequate padding and support for the neck and make sure the neck is line, uh, in line with the uh, body. And always keep an axillary pad uh, for uh, uh, under the non-operative side. So next, I prefer to keep this again. This uh, this is an example where I get to operate on a basic setup, so where I don't have any other uh, extravagant uh, instrumentation. So th this is an example how can we manage uh, lateral leg position. So again, here I prefer to keep two posterior support, one at the level of scapula, one at the level of uh, pelvis, to stabilize the patient and make sure you again. Uh, try to protect all the bony prominence, especially in the lower limb for the uh, common peroneal nerve and also lateral malleolus. So keep a pillow below the, below the leg and flex it. Another pillow between these two legs and, uh, and we have to stab these legs so that the patient doesn't move. So from the front, again, as I told you, you have to try to keep an axillary pad. And again, from the front, you stabilize the patient other uh, side support. And this particular uh, uh, procedure, uh, uh, technique is like you have to strap, uh, st uh, strap the uh, operative limb with a skin traction kit so that you can keep it under traction. So I'll just show this uh, technique, how we do it in a video presentation uh, lately. So you can see the patient, the neck is uh, pushed in straight position, actually pad is given, and again the bony prominence are all protected, and the patient stabbed well. So again, so uh, uh, cost becomes a very much uh, important constraint in our practice. So here you can see an example of where we have any uh, uh, like 3M uh, adhesive tapes to uh, st uh, tape the patient so that uh, the, the fluid doesn't extravasate on the patient ears and uh, body. So you can also use such a drape system or uh, uh, very easily available uh, plastic drapes are available in the market where you can just tape the uh, patient so that the fluid doesn't uh, seep inside. So I just tape them adequately, but again, do not over drape them. You have, should have some space for you to operate and make the portals. So just uh, try to tape the patient properly. And I prefer to, uh, once I give a traction, I prefer to hang the patient's uh, hand in a T stand like this so that I don't require any assistant holding the hand while I'm uh, painting or draping. So I, uh, I don't require any assistant extra assistant. So in this way, the patient hands can be hanged apart. So after uh, draping and painting, I, I'll go and receive the uh, hand in a sterile fashion, and this is where I uh, apply traction. This is another T-stand. This is not any. This is not special uh, traction device. I use a T-stand to just uh, put a traction weight up to up to five kgs and hang the patient's arm and suspend it. And make sure it, uh, traction should be just gentle. You don't have to have a uh, prolonged traction because uh, any undue traction can call, cause neuropraxy in lateral uh, positions. So uh, when you see, this is the position, final position, where I can get to see the monitor easily. I'm going to stand in this particular position. You can see the portals marked. They are adequately draped. And I can ha ask my assistant, if at all I require any vertical traction, I can ask my assistant to hold this hand here. OK. It's not see. So I can, uh, I can ask my assistant to hold my hand and uh, lift it appropriately. So if at all you require any additional support, you can uh, have an axillary roll over here and which can have an adequate uh, upper lift of the uh, arm. So this is a basic setup. So we, don't have, we did not use a lateral uh, three-point traction system over here. We just used a uh, IV stand. This will work fine. Only thing is you require an extra assistant to uh, give an upward traction at times when you require to go and work on the anterior labrum or inferior labrum. 
So this one is a video presentation again. So that's going to be a lot of difference between the pictures that I showed you and the video here. This is a video which I had to record when I recorded it when I was a fellow in the one, along with Dr. Sham. So here, yeah, sorry, sorry for spell check, it's positioning. So here, as I told you, this is how we first trap the patient. See this, as I told you, it's a team approach. The anesthesia team works on the general anesthesia part, and my scrub nurse start working over there in the back side, and uh, my auto assistants will be uh, working on the traction right now. So just, they try to strap the hand carefully with uh, skin trashing it. It's a normal skin trashing, it, nothing uh, uh, new. So we, we strap it firmly, so it doesn't slip away. So we need to assent to do that. So once we do uh, firmly uh, give it, uh, apply this uh, skin traction kit, yeah. So so you can see the anesthetist standing by the head of the patient, carefully protecting the neck and head. And here the Dr. Sham and assistants are there to turn the patient appropriately. And uh, it, uh, it's a team effort. Again, everything has to go on a single go, whereby the patient neck has to be protected till the till we put the patient in the latter position. You can see they are carefully shifting the patient. And again, the neck has been protected by the gel foam over here. So yeah. Now you can see some, uh, they are wrapping some sheet of kind of thing. This is a, a vacuum assisted bean bag where instead of the posterior and uh, anterior support, this can, uh, once you wrap the patient and uh, apply vacuum, it can uh, uh, it form a firm device holding the patient in the latter position. You can see it's been shrinking down and holds the patient firmly. So this, this is, again, uh, extra equipment we can buy, if at all you have a price. And the neck is protected, and the axillary pad uh, roll is kept in uh, over here. Again, uh, every effort has to be taken to protect all the bony problems, because the most common complication in the lateral debridation is the uh, 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 compression to the bony prominences. And again, once it is done, the uh, operated limb is going to be put in a traction. This uh, traction frame, what we use in uh, ortho one, again, it's been uh, uh, custom made over there. So this is a lateral traction frame with a pulley. So uh, you can see uh, how loose and uh, re relaxed the uh, arm is. You don't have to apply too much of traction. And again, this is another T-stand what they have done because uh, after putting the uh, limb in this traction, if at all we require vertical traction, they can apply another skin traction uh, foam which is sterile in a sterile manner and apply vertical traction to this pulley. So again, that can be done over there. All time, we can also use uh, an assistant to do, do that uh, vertical traction. They are, again, they're preparing the patient for, they're wrapping the patient properly with a warmer, and this is where you're gonna operate. So this is, again, another way of draping a patient with a sophisticated increment like traction devices and uh, body bean bag. So that's the lateral uh, decubitus position. So the advantage of uh, lateral position is it increases the access to the glenohumeral joint and subacromial space, especially when we work in the labral pathologies. Um, and it has a better cerebral perfusion because the patient's lying flat. The cerebral hypotension uh, kind of uh, complication can be avoided. And, uh, it, uh, and there'll be less fogging of camera. And once we use a cautery, uh, like uh, RF uh, devices, the bubbles which comes out of them will be displaced laterally above the humeral head, so it doesn't come in the way and uh, blocks your vision. But the disadvantage is the traction. The excessive traction or inadequate uh, uh, padding of the bony prominence can cause uh, neuropraxias. By chance, if at all, we're working in on cuff pathologies. And this is for labral pathology. But if at all, we are working in a cuff pathology, by chance, if we are trying to convert in an open procedure, the, this, uh, this position is an disadvantage because we have to re-drape and reposition the patient again and go for an open procedure. And again, uh, the mo uh, for the beginners, this lateral position uh, can, can be a kind of a non-orientation because the patient, uh, you'll be seeing all the humeral head and the uh, you know, in a perpendicular manner, not in the vertical manner, where we are anatomically oriented. So for the beginners, it might be a little difficult to understand the orientation in the initial phases. And again, uh, it requires a, a general anesthesia because we cannot put the patient on sedation for a quite long time. So that's with the lateral position. Now we are coming on to the beach chair position. So first I'll tell about the most important complication beach chair position because here again, for beach chair position, we definitely need some sort of an OT table which can uh, like it has to have a lot of supports, like especially the cervical and neck support. So the, motor, the potential mechanic block from the OT table is the most uh, important drawback for a uh, beach chair position, especially for safety as well as for exposure, because not all OT table are compatible for beach chair positions, because we get to operate in everywhere. Isn't it? So again, uh, the next important complication is the increased risk of 
cerebral hypoperfusion and intraoperative stroke because uh, the blood flow can be, uh, can be reduced in the uh, to vertebral artery when there's a stretching of neck. So that's the most important complication being recorded in a beach position. So again, this is the data layout, but again, this is similar to that of the uh, lateral position where the OT table is in the center of the table, uh, center of the OT. Your equipments come in the opposite side. The surgeon uh, stands at the head end of the patient. And again, we have a I, I prefer to keep my mayor stand on the uh, in front of the patient over here. Another mayor table behind me and a back table over here. So this is uh, OT layout. So now coming to the position. So here you can see the uh, once the patient is anesthetized, the patient should lie flat on the table such that the patient's trochanter or the gluteal region comes in line with the area where the table is going to be break, uh, uh, broken or just lifted apart, uh, uh, up above. So because that is where uh, it, uh, your hip is going to flex. The next important step is to align the neck in line with the body in such a way that there's no any undue stress to the neck. So the, uh, proper cervical neck support with the strapping of the chin and the forehead is mandatory because any deviation during the surgery g can apply undue traction because the patient's already anesthetized. Here you cannot uh, operate on a, uh, uh, like if the patient's already anesthetized, the patient won't be able to say whether he's uh, having any stress to the neck. So always maintain, a pro uh, we need a proper cervical spine support. So once we elevate, you can see in the picture, the neck is in a neutral position and moreover it's relaxed and uh, it's been adequately strapped by a forehead strap and a uh, chin strap. So once we confirm with the position of the neck, then we move on to the uh, exposure. So here the table should be able to detach and uh, give us adequate exposure like this because not much of table we can do such things. Uh, in some tables where we cannot break it, uh, we, we have to position the patient a little laterally. That might hamper with the exposure of the shoulder joint. So always make sure the table is adequate for uh, uh, beach position. So once we remove this uh, detachable device, the patient should be strapped safely with a body strap over here and another strap for the legs so that they don't fall apart when, when we are doing the uh, surgery. And th there should be adequate space for us to work upon. So this is like this. So there, there's enough space for us to work upon over here. And as I told you, we need certain, uh, again, so this is a, a special I told you, this is a, the polyaxial system, which I call a tri trimano or the shoulder uh, arm support system, uh, which comes in various uh, companies, uh, this one in Stryker and Arthrex and uh, we call it trimano and uh, in uh, Smith & Few called Spider. So this is a polyaxial system where you can rest the arm in a sterile fashion over the trimano and uh, with the click of the button you can just uh, uh, we can adjust the position of this device and the device holds works fine so I'll just show a small video presentation so this is a, a device uh, which, I, which I was talking about so the patient's position over here you can see neck is strapped in neutral position the shoulder is adequately exposed so again for example for instance uh, imagine this I have uh, draped the arm and just uh, strapped to this device uh, just a click of button over there in the switch, the device can be positioned in uh, such a way, it can hold the arm in a particular position where you lock it. So if at all you want external notation, internal notation, the traction, uh, this uh, system works fine for us. But again, this is a costly affair. Not necessarily you should have it on all cases. Instead, you can have an assistant to do this job. Again, if at all you have this device, the life is a lot more easier for us. So again, coming to the exposure, this is the final uh, uh, position where you can see that adequate exposure for us to work up on. This is where we work, and there's a space for us to stab the patient over here. So here, if you can see, the table is the most important part in a beach position. If at all we don't, we don't have a proper table to uh, mainly to stabilize the neck, we don't have to use this uh, technique because it puts a lot of uh, risk to the patient, especially in terms of uh, cerebral hypoperfusion and also the vertebral artery occlusion. So uh, this is how the patient, uh, and again, you have to try to keep a pillow so that it will relax the skyating nerve. So uh, after, after final positioning, you can strap the patient uh, adequately at the uh, level of body and also the leg. And then you can treat the patient as such, uh, which we showed in the previous uh, slides. So this is the final concept where I, I told I'm going to keep a maestro in front of me where can I have, uh, hold all the equipments uh, and another maestro behind me. So coming to advantages of a uh, beach side position, the upright orientation of the patient, uh, the trainees uh, for the initial few slides, it, uh, the orientation is much better in a shoulder, I mean in a beach side position. Again, if at all we plan to convert into open uh, open procedure, uh, it, it's quite easy in a uh, uh, position to just uh, retract the table back. And if at all any complication occurs, also the anesthetist can push the patient back into neutral position in any in a within seconds. And uh, instance of reduced neurovascular complications. And coming to disadvantages, again, risk of a cerebral hypoperfusion is most important. 
and, and all OT tables are not compatible with this position. Thank you.